And now we have a great guest with us, uh, Congresswoman Heather Wilson from New Mexico. Uh, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it's my it. My pleasure. Uh, you were in a, a tight primary in New Mexico uh, that uh, wound up going in the opposite direction. What happened there? What went wrong? Well, it, it, nothing went wrong. The voters get to make a choice, and they chose the other guy. Well, you know, from our perspective, uh, it seems that uh, in the primaries, the Republicans keep choosing more and more conservative folks. You know, your opponent was more conservative than you were. Uh, is that a bad strategy for winning general elections? Well, it is the reality, and I don't think there's nothing, there's nothing new about it, and, and it's true on the Democrat side and the Republican side that, um, that disproportionately more, you know, in a primary, it's more, about 30% of the people show up to vote in a primary, and they tend to be more conservative Republicans and more liberal Democrats. That's actually what we're seeing, uh, what we saw in the Democratic presidential primary, is that Hillary Clinton didn't take Barack Obama seriously, and she moved towards the center, and Barack Obama ran as a hard left uh, uh, Democrat. Congressman, do you really think that Barack Obama is hard left? Which, which, Absolutely. He's which the most, of his positions do you think was hard left? Well, he's the, he's, you don't have to take my word for it. Look at something like the National Journal. They rate him as the most liberal senator in the United States Senate. I, I, I'm a little, I have to confess that I'm a little dubious of the National Journal because whoever okay. is running for uh, president on the Democratic side magically happens to be the most liberal senator according to their rankings every single time. What happened? John Kerry is all of a sudden not the most liberal, and Barack Obama is he's more liberal than Ted Kennedy. It just doesn't seem to make that much sense. So I, I wanted to ask you specifically on his positions. Which of his positions do you think are too far to the left? Well, his position on abortion, on uh, the Born Alive Protection Act, for example, uh, when the state of Illinois, he voted twice for the Democrat budget, which increased, which kind of paved the way for increasing taxes on anyone making more than forty-two thousand dollars a year. He's voted against exploration on off offshore oil. So, so let's have a conversation about the first couple of things you mentioned sure. there. Um, his position is pro-choice, uh, which 70% of the country agrees with. How is that too depends far on how left? You, depends on how you phrase that question. Okay. Um, uh, if you ask people if they're pro-choice, they'll generally say yes. If you ask them if they're pro-life, they'll generally say yes. So it is a. It, it often depends on how you characterize the question. Do you but, not think that the great majority of the country is actually pro-choice? No, I think it's pretty evenly split. Oh, really? When, you think it's 50-50? When depending okay. on how you ask the question, yes. And oh, the only interesting. interesting thing about that mm -hmm. is that it is changing more among younger women than any other group. And mm -hmm. I don't think that has anything to do with politics. I think that has to do with science. Um, how so? Because more women are seeing sonograms. Uh, very early in their pregnancies, and you know it's hard to say something. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to say something isn't alive when you can say, "Hey, he has his dad's nose." I you think know? that that might affect the the decision to whether to carry the pregnancy to term or not. But that's still a decision. Uh, I would imagine the polls I've seen, and you know everybody can mm -hmm. always dispute polls, uh, seem to indicate that women still believe that they should have the choice and the decision to make. Even if more of them are choosing to carry the term, which we're all happy about. Well, I, I'm not going to argue with you about about those polls or how they're constructed and things, but I have seen a shift over time among younger women in their view of whether abortion is right or wrong. So, But I, I want to get uh, back to what you said about the Illinois state legislature uh, and Obama's vote there. Uh, Obama says, hey, listen, they were trying to sneak in uh, legislation here that was going to fundamentally affect the choice of a woman uh, to have a pregnancy or not. Now, some of the right-wing opponents may say, no, that's not true. He was voting to kill, what, what is the argument, to kill babies that are already born? Can it, are you, is that really it the argument? A, uh, it was a very short bill. It was very clear and three lines long, as I understand it, and it had to do with a, with a, uh, a baby where there was an intended abortion and and the infant is born alive, is br it, no longer in the mother's body, and is breathing. So and, and you know you provide medical care to that child uh, rather than let that child die. Barack Obama says there are two other bills that cover that issue. Clearly, that's anyone not what he argued at the time, uh -huh. and that I think is important. He realized after he took that vote, and he was actually a leader on this. He he was kind of radically pro-choice, if you will, and said and and. And at the time, argued it from a straight point of view of saying, you know, it's the mother's right to choose and so forth. Um, and then he realized that, hey, maybe that really is a hard sell when you've got a breathing, living 
born child, and now he changes how he justifies his vote, and I find that troubling. It seems to me that there are uh, conflicting uh, reports about what the bill was in Illinois and what the national bill was. They were two different bills. I'm talking, uh, actually, there was, well, they, they are slightly different, but I'm talking about the way he led the effort in the state of Illinois. And it seemed to me that his answer was he did the they didn't want to get involved in a doctor's decision to bring in a separate doctor, etc. So I'm, I'm asking, do you really believe he thought that once you deliver the baby, if it's alive, that we should go ahead and end its life? Do you, do you really yes. believe? You do? Yes, I do. Wow. And I think that's, and he was a leader on that issue. Okay. All right. You're clear on it. Yep. So there you have it. Now, on, uh, on the issues of um, the economy. Uh, the Republicans say that they have a positive message there. So uh, I'm trying to discern what it is other than lower d taxes. Why do you think that John McCain would be better on the economy than, than Barack Obama? When you have, when you have a, a shaky economy, one of the worst things you can do is raise taxes, particularly when it affects small business. Mm -hmm. And small business is the engine of job growth in America. Seven out of ten new jobs come from small business. A lot of those small business owners are actually s Chapter S corporations, they're paying the individual income tax rate. I, and so, so it is absolutely critical when you look at the tax code that you need to keep taxes low on small business because that's where the jobs come from. And I, I think there's a very big difference there um, between Senator McCain and Senator Obama on what's the best thing to do with tax policy. If you want to kill job growth, raise taxes on small business. Mm -hmm. So that is a different way of saying people making over $250,000 should also get tax cuts and that uh, it is the Bush tax cuts being made permanent, as John McCain wants, and the corporate tax rate being dropped from 35 to 25% are still good ideas, despite the fact that we have these enormous deficits. It's interesting. We, uh, we balanced the budget in 1998, 1999, and 2000 and paid off $450 billion of publicly held debt. It's hard to remember now, but the week before 9-11, we were debating what we were going to do with a huge surplus. That's right. Because we couldn't pay down debt fast enough. And then the world changed. We found ourselves in a war, recovering from a national emergency and in a soft economy all at the same time. Um, and uh, and so, you know, we made, the, we made the decision that we had to deficit spend to deal with that issue, but that we had to control the growth of government spending in order to get back into a balanced budget situation. I don't think there's any question that when it comes to being fiscally conservative and controlling the growth of government, um, that the Democrats and the Democrat budgets are way out of line with, with Republicans. We're talking to United States Representative Heather Wilson from New Mexico. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, we didn't have to cut taxes, though, uh, after we got attacked on 9-11, did we? I mean, what is the correlation there? And we, it did cost us $1.8 trillion in that in We that would budget. have had 800, and all the, all the, con, the, uh, the, the most conservative with a small C estimate that I saw was that 800,000 more Americans would have gotten an unemployment check rather than a paycheck had we not taken action with respect to the to the tax code. So I've got to ask you and finally, stimulus. the Republicans always say, and I was a Republican for a long time, cut taxes, cut taxes. I think they were right when Reagan came in, 70% marginal tax rate for the highest amount. Is there a limit? Is there a point where you say, okay, we've cut taxes too much? Well, I, obviously, you need to be able to run the functions of government. I think that the tax relief that we passed in 2001 and 2003 should be made permanent. I also think, and it was actually Senator Pete Domenici of New Mexico who led the effort in the Balanced Budget Act to get the country back to a balanced budget and paying off publicly held debt. That was Senator Domenici's Republican effort to say we need to be fiscally responsible and try to pay, you know, try not to go uh, further into debt and start paying off publicly held debt. But, you know, you, we're pretty much out of time. But you mentioned that uh, Clinton did balance the budgets and he no, did raise taxes. The, the Congress. Congress and Clinton fund. together. Congress and Clinton. And Pete yeah. Domenici is a Republican last time I checked. All right. Heather Wilson from New Mexico. Thank you Thank so much you. for joining us Thank on the Thank you very Curse. much.